Welcome. We're here today with Margot McDermott. She is the state representative in Illinois for District 37, which is the district where Stirk Family Law Office is located. So we're privileged today to have Margot. Welcome. Thanks, Gwen. Today we're going to talk about the new legislative series, um, cases and instances that we want to address. And the first one's on domestic violence and orders of protection, which was Public Act 100-597, 597, which became effective on June 29, 2018. So, Margo, you were a real advocate of this bill, is that correct? I really like this bill. It does two things to help uh, victims of domestic violence here in Illinois. And the first one was to make it easier to serve the requests for the orders of protection. One of the big problems that uh, women were having was getting someone to serve it on a timely basis. Sure. And that delay causes you to have to keep going back to court, spend more money for more process servers, and just be in limbo or in fear for all that extra time. So it does make it easier for that process to go forward. Right. So that's important. And there's a second element of that bill as well that deals with the state's attorney being able to pursue certain of these instances. Can you address that with us? One of the things that state's attorneys were looking for, people in the law enforcement community were looking for, is the ability to bring a request for an order of protection themselves in the, if the um, uh, named person doesn't want to go forward. They, the state's attorney could bring it in, in the name of uh, minors or dependent adults. And sure. I think that's a really important protection because sometimes um, the victim herself is unwilling or unable to do it. And this way the state's attorney can come in and protect people in that home. Sure. I mean, we're all familiar with the cycle of abuse and, you know, all the different layers that people go through. So, so you're right. Many times the victim, you know, they get into that pattern and they're not, they're too fearful. They're economically unsure of themselves. They don't want to pursue it. And then you have people that are real victims or the victims of the victim. Fair enough. Exactly. And it does provide for the respondent to be able to bring um, a meritorious defense to the state's attorney's claims for this order. So it, it provides some constitutional protections for the respondents as right. well. I think so, it's a really balanced bill. Right. So it would be filing a petition on behalf of the petitioner would be the state's attorney for the minor child or the dependent adult against the respondent, the one who's the alleged abuser, correct? That's right. Okay. And so all of these are important because many times we go into court and we'll see them dropped or we'll see that they don't show up for the extension hearings. And so the state's attorney does have to have some kind of remedy. So this is wonderful. You know, there are cases there, where there's true violence, where it's very clear. And they would like to protect other people in the home. That's right. And be able to do something. It's also interesting to me that in this area of domestic violence, Illinois seems to be taking additional steps. You know, we often hear and get calls here about VESA, which was the victim economic um, assistance that was provided to victims of domestic violence in Illinois. So even if you have one employer here in Illinois and you have somebody who works for you and they are the victim, whether it be time off work for purposes of going to court, getting medical care, getting counseling, whatever it is that they need for time, the employers are required. And I think that's great. And I'm sure you were a supporter of that act as yes, well. Yes, and I think that you know, you're gonna find a lot of support for protecting uh, victims of domestic violence in the Illinois General Assembly. That's fantastic. In addition to that, I think it's really interesting, you know, that a lot of the bills that apply to smaller employers, you have to have 10 employees or 15 employees, but when it comes to VESA, you got one employee, you're bound by it, which yes. is really interesting. So I think that that's great. And I do think that the attitude in Illinois has been one to, first of all, be very protective of these situations and pass legislation that's going to help in the area of domestic violence, but two, also recognizing the aids and available resources that are out there as well. That's really important. It is, and getting to counseling. And if you are out there and you're a victim of domestic violence, you have action to take and you have the ability to do things. If you have questions, you can call us. If they wanted to get a hold of you to understand what resources are available in the state, how would they contact you, Margo? You can reach out at repmcdermott.com. Great, and so we appreciate your time today. Thanks, Thank you. Glenn.